Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The advent of bombers and air forces played a pivotal role as they could wipe out a city in minutes. The history of bombers dates back to the First World War era when the Americans manufactured DH.4 bombers. Even though the First World War came to an end in 1918, the tension between the nations was ramping up. Many bombers were developed and manufactured by the U.S. during this era as a proactive measure to face the Second World War. One of the most notable bomber aircraft, with the third highest production of all time, was the B-17 Flying Fortress, also considered to be the trailblazer of all the U.S. bombers. The bomber was developed by the Boeing Company for the U.S. Army Air Corps and entered service in 1941. The B-17G model could accommodate 10 airmen for operations and had seven gun positions fitted with 13 machine guns. It could carry 9,600 pounds of bombs over a distance of 3,750 miles. The legacy of U.S. air power continued with the B-24 Liberator and B-29 Super Fortress. The B-52 Strato Fortress entered service in 1955 and threatens the enemies to date as the longest serving bomber. Later, a new combination of payload and speed was introduced into the U.S. Air Fleet with the B-1 Lancer, or the Bone. Since 1986, this aircraft has played the role of being a long-range, multi-mission, penetrating strike bomber, serving the U.S. Air Force. The high cost involved with the production and the initiation of the B-2 program halted the B-1 program, which later came back into action in 1981 under the name B-1B. Rockwell manufactured 100 bombers and delivered the last one in 1988. The U.S. Air Force expects to fly the Lancer beyond 2040 with new retrofits such as Integrated Battle Station, or IBS. General Electric F-101 turbofan engines with afterburners power the bomber with a massive thrust of 120,000 pounds at takeoff. The F-101 engine was specially designed for the B-1B. An auxiliary power unit, or APU, is available for each engine and is able to provide the required air pressure needed to start the engines. Out. 
A dedicated switch in the nose landing gear door starts the APUs without accessing the cockpit to expedite the startup procedure for scramble takeoffs. The cockpit accommodates the pilot, co-pilot, and two weapon system officers, or WSO. Even though the B-1A was designed to reach a maximum speed of Mach 2, B-1B's fixed engine inlets restrict the maximum speed to Mach 1.2. The bomber has a maximum range of around 6,500 nautical miles. The range, or the loitering time, could be extended with mid-air refueling. B-1B holds more than 50 records for speed, range, and payload under its belt. The U.S. Air Force operated a total number of 62 B-1Bs, and the recent retirement of 17 bombers reduced the in-service fleet to 45. Two of the biggest strengths of the B-1 are our combat payload and our flexibility. With a combat payload, the B-1 is able to carry more 2,000-pound bombs than any other airplane in the inventory. Navy Ordnance personnel built inert Mark 62 quick-strike mines before loading them into the weapon bay. The arming device is installed to the nose section of the mine case, while the target detection device, or TDD, is fitted to the rear section with a tail assembly that contains fins. MK-62 quick strike mines are usually fitted with an MK-57 target detection device of magnetic, seismic type. Explosive Ordnance Disposal, or EOD officers, are experts in explosives and oversee the mine building process. These mines are air laid for surface and subsurface targets in the shallow sea. All mines are fitted with two suspension lugs to hoist the mine by a bomb loader from the munition cart. Each mine weighs 500 pounds. The bomb loader transfers the mine to a jammer that can raise the mine to the weapons bay. The Lancer has three internal weapon bays and six external hardpoints in its underbelly. A total payload of 75,000 pounds can be carried in the internal weapons bays, while 59,000 pounds of munitions can be mounted on the external hardpoints. B-1B was originally designed to carry nuclear weapons in internal bays and hardpoints. 
But with the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty signed between U.S. and Russia, B-1B is no longer nuclear capable and will continue to be a conventional bomber. The B-1 incorporates a blended wing body design with a variable geometry sweep wing that adjusts according to the flight phase. Forward wing settings are used during the takeoff, landing, aerial refueling, and high altitude weapon deployment. Aft wing setting is the combat mode and is used during supersonic flight. B-1 pilots, maintenance technicians, navigators, gunners, and all related personnel undergo recurrent training to improve combat readiness. A Bomber Task Force is a mission carried out by the U.S. Air Force across the globe to improve combat readiness. During the bombing run training, the B-1 drops different types of bombs to ascertain the success rate. The BTF is basically the 37th coming out to support PACOM and its mission to show that the B-1 can still employ anywhere, anytime in support of our allies and show our adversaries that we're still capable of anything. When a B-1B undergoes maintenance tasks other than flight line checks and maintenance, the aircraft is towed to a hangar facility. On the flight line, airmen perform routine inspections, lubrication, and servicing of the various aircraft systems. Additionally, aircraft pushback and towing operations are more frequently carried out by the airmen on the flight line. During nighttime operations, marshalers use illuminated marshalling wands for greater visibility. A marshaler should make sure that the intended path of the aircraft is clear of obstructions before giving the signals. It's a tough aircraft to work. It's challenging. Um, some days you just want to, you know, just go home and cry after the day you have. But, you know, when you see the aircraft, I think you mentioned it, when you see the aircraft take off, it's what it's all about. As a replacement for the B-1 fleet came the B-2 Spirit Bomber, introduced in 1997. The B-2 is stealthy and capable of carrying nuclear weapons and is the only bomber that can carry massive ordnance penetrators, or MOPs. Contrary to that, higher operating costs and extensive maintenance incurred with the B-2 bombers offered more opportunities for the B-1B Lancers to serve longer than expected. To this date, the U.S. Air Force operates three bombers, B-52 Strato Fortress, B-1B Lancer, and B-2 Spirit. Each of these bombers is special in different aspects. The B-1B is the only supersonic bomber available for the U.S. Air Force. 
In 2012, a B-1B crossed the 10,000 combat mission line with pride. Still, the Lancer is the backbone of America's long-range bomber fleet and will continue to serve the nation for years to come. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.